Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I am making stew luau. It is not as hard as you think, I promise. So I'm gonna start here with three onions and I'm gonna slice them really, really thin. The goal here is to caramelize the onions and this is gonna take a while. I do have a trick that I'm gonna share with you guys to help the process along and make it a lot quicker than it normally takes. So I'm gonna just put all of my onions, this is in a wok, it's up to you. You can use a wok, you can use a frying pan, whatever you prefer as long as the onions will fit. I added about a quarter cup of water and a tablespoon of salt and I'm gonna cover it okay you're gonna cover it and what this is gonna do is it's gonna steam the onions that way it'll take down the cooking time by a lot here I have my kalo leaves and the stem I'm just showing you guys where you need to cut off you don't want to leave too much of the stem on there because that is a part that's a lot harder to cook you also want to peel off that skin on the outside of that stem part of the leaf here I have my meat. This is three pounds of beef roast. Mine's is a lot more lean. I chose to use this cut because it's really all I have left. I only have a couple roasts left. And if you follow my other videos, you know that we order half of a 100% grass-fed cow at a time. So that's the only roast I have left. I chose to use that one. It is a little more lean, so it's going to be a little more dense, but it's gonna come out soft so don't worry about it you guys okay so I took all my taro leaves I have about three pounds here I rinsed them all and then I am going to roll it up I'm gonna show you in a little bit exactly how to do it so I'm gonna stack a bunch on top of each other I ended up doing about four of these so this is one you're gonna roll it up just like that and then you're gonna slice it really really thin and then chop it as small as you can you don't have to chop it tiny it's really up to you but it does help the cooking process because the, these leaves are made really really tough and they also have this uh, scratchiness when you eat undercooked or not cooked taro leaves it causes a scratchiness like an itchiness in your throat so you want to make sure you cut them smaller so that they can cook down even quicker and even better so you don't get that itchy in your throat okay so i'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it with both hands so i just took all of my kalo leaves i stacked them up like i said i did about four of these rolls so this is roll number two and i'm just gonna slice slice across this way and then i just took the knife eventually and i cut them the other way i just tried to chop them as small as i can and then i'm just gonna put them on the side remember this is rinsed taro leaves or kalo leaves we call them kalo but you can call them taro as well and i'm in washington state and i can find taro leaves here thank goodness i can always find taro leaves in a few local stores in the area it's usually the asian type stores that have taro leaves but i'm just super grateful that i can find it up here because it's tough i have a sister that live in Ma lives in maryland and she has the hardest time trying to find kalo leaves and she said there is a farm but the farm is really 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 expensive because it takes a lot more work to have them grow in maryland versus i guess where we get it in washington or where the washington stores get it so i'm just here finishing chopping up my kalo leaves and then i'm going to put them in a bowl to just store it as you can see because after you chop up your three pounds of taro leaves it's going to be a lot so get a really big bowl this is a really big pakini as my mom would call it and i'm just gonna set it aside right now i'm just checking on the onions so you want to periodically check on the onions always use a pan that's a non-stick pan it'll help you cook the onions a lot easier and a lot quicker so i'm just stirring it then i'm going to cover it back what you want to wait for with the onions is for it to turn brown and caramelize because that is going to be incredible flavor you're adding to your stew luau. So I have here four cups of beef broth and I'm going to put it at a rolling boil because what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to just get these kalo leaves to cook down and to condense almost. As you can see, I'm just going to take a spoon and I'm just going to have it mixed so that I can keep adding the leaves and keep adding and keep adding until all of my leaves are like a little bit blanched and then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients once they're ready to be added 
just continue to add your kalo leaves a little at a time so that way you can get it into the beef broth and have it start to cook it's kind of a slow process so take your time but you want to keep it at a rolling boil it is a very tough leaf you guys i promise you so it'll take hours of cooking before it's even ready right now we're just kind of trying to blanch it and trying to get it to condense get smaller shrivel up a little bit and then we can cover it and it can start its next process so in my non-stick wok I have my three onions and as you can see it's a beautiful brown and it's caramelized at this point so this is going to add incredible intense flavor to your stew luau not everyone puts onions i choose to put onions in mine because we love onions in this house and onions is just really bomb bursting flavor so i'm gonna just put that on the side right now i covered my luau leaves and i just i'm gonna have it boil i have it on medium high on six and i'm just gonna let it cook down on its own it'll be fine trust me so I put a little bit of cooking oil in my frying pan, same frying pan, and I'm going to fry my pieces of my beef roast. The goal we're trying to achieve for this is for it to get those little brown bits on every side. That is flavor. It's called the Maillard reaction. And just know that that browning effect is flavor and it's going to add a lot of depth to your dish flavor wise. So we're gonna put it in, it's on medium high, it's on about seven. And I'm gonna put a little bit of oil, like I said, keep it in the oil and just let each side cook until we get that browning effect on all of the pieces. I also did it in a few batches because you don't wanna crowd the pan. When you crowd the pan, it doesn't allow each piece of meat to fully dry up and then get that brown bits on every part of the meat. So you wanna just put a bunch in there not too much and do it in smaller batches i also dried the meat with a napkin to get it as dry as possible that's how you achieve a better browning effect on the meat as well so here is our beautiful caramelized onions it took it was actually really quick to cook because we did that whole um, steaming process in the beginning add it into your luau leaf pot and stir it in really good and then you're just gonna cover it back up and let that cook together, let all those flavors marry and let it break down all together. I'm telling you, you guys, it's gonna be such gorgeous flavor. So the water level is pretty good because I know I'm right here and I'm watching it. If the water level gets too low, it will burn everything. So you have to make sure you monitor the amount of water that's in the luau leaves and the onion. So it's cooking now, I'm gonna flip my meat you see those beautiful brown bits that is what we want so don't rush the process okay make sure you dry it off really well your meat you don't want it soaking wet you want it as dry as possible so it can get that crisping effect or the Maillard reaction okay put it in your pan give it some time resist the urge to flip it over until you know it's totally ready and then you're just gonna do it batch by batch and put it on the side for now we're not gonna add it yet the first batch of meat is pretty much done. I've got all of my brown sides. I'm gonna put it on this pan and just keep it on the side until all the meat is complete. Then we're gonna add it in the luau leaves. So don't add it yet. Just keep it on the side and keep cooking all of your meat until it's complete. At this point, I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt. I put about a tablespoon of salt in the leaf and onion pot. That way it'll help it flavor it. Do not over salt also you just want to put enough salt to give a little bit of flavor and help everything break down and marry together and that's it you can always add more salt at the end as you get to taste it don't over salt so here i'm just adding enough water to cover the leaves i didn't measure i just kind of look mix it around and make sure my leaves are at least submerged in the beef broth this is just water i'm adding so you don't need to add more beef broth but you can it's up to you i just added water make sure my leaves were pretty much good under the water and then i turned it down a little bit because at this point we are going to add the meat so you want to add it in layers okay do not mix the meat in resist the urge <laughs> you're going to just place the meat on top of the leaves because we really want 
the cooking to be concentrated on those really tough leaves and the meat is just going to get lightly steamed at the top while the leaves are cooking so don't stir it just place the leaves um, not the leaves place your meat right on top of your leaves and just let it cook like that okay don't throw away any of those drippings get those drippings in the pot that's also flavor so after I got all the meat in the pot, I'm going to turn it up so that way it can start boiling. Once it gets to a boil, I'm going to turn it down to low or simmer. It depends on how big your pot is and how much food you actually have in it. I actually had to leave mine on number three on my stove and not low or simmer because it was just cooking way too low for my preference. And this is how it looks at this point. So I didn't mix it. It just totally turned out like that and what I did was I cooked it down for about two and a half three hours and just let it simmer on three at that point you can enjoy your stulu out at that point you don't have to do anything else what I did at that point was I added a teaspoon of baking soda just to take off some of that itch from the leaves just in case and then I added two cans of coconut milk I actually ended up adding another so there's three total in there my husband was like look babe there's not enough coconut flavor so I added more coconut milk there's three cans in there and then I added about a quarter cup to a half cup of sugar just to give it a little sweet and then I let it cook for about half an hour more but that's about it you guys you can eat it at this point you can also put it in a blender and take out the meat and put the leaf portion in the blender and make it into a thicker stu luau or you can use an immersion blender to blend down those leaves it's up to you i left it right like this all right you guys that is it let me know down below if you end up making the recipe and how you take it do you take it with coconut milk without coconut milk i'm curious to know because i feel like i always need coconut milk in it don't forget to like don't forget to share don't forget to comment down below hit that notification button that way you're notified every time we post a new video and don't forget to subscribe because it helps our channel grow all right till the next video you guys ahui ho